this CFL lamp right over here is not plugged in that's the plug for it right there All right and just to clear up any misconceptions this is not some high voltage uh, AC board this is just your average run of the mill plus 15 minus 15 plus 5 1 amp uh, TTL slash operational amplifier breadboard so at maximum each one of those red channels right there will only put out half an amp I think the plus 5 will put out the full amp and the plus and minus 15 or max uh, half an amp um, so that leads me to believe that this circuit is definitely pulling less than half an amp uh, probably more like 250 milliamps because I know I can plug more things into the circuit and the fuse will not blow out. Unfortunately, whenever I try to get a reading off my multimeter, for instance, uh, if I just even want to measure the voltage, let me zoom out here, even if I want to measure the voltage of the whole circuit, so that means I would short the red, this guy here, brown, uh, the circuit breaks down so I can't get a reading or, or current nothing uh, at least not reliably while it's on but I assure you that this dial right here is from 0 to 15 volts okay right now I'm driving pretty hard at 15 volts um, if I bump it all the way down this is 9 volts and, and let's take a peek at the camera and I can keep adding more bulbs Another bulb. This is 14 watts. This is a 14 watt CFL. Okay. If I do, the more bulbs you add, the uh, I'm not exactly sure what happens when you add more bulbs, but eventually it just breaks down. So I have two times 14 plus a 24 right here. Add another one. And then eventually that one goes out because of the range decreases. As you add more load to the circuit, the range decreases. Okay, but as you can see, with only three, I get a pretty decent range on this bulb. Um, and if I ground it with my finger, I can actually increase it ever so slightly. So at 9 volts, if, for instance, let's say this thing was plugged into a 9-volt battery, so basically I'm just using this as one giant 9 volt battery um, and it just makes my life a lot easier than having to solder and resolder because I like to tinkering with the circuits, adding capacitors in. If I can optimize the circuit further, um, there's only three components. This is the transistor. It's a, it's a small transistor. It's a TU-2032. Uh, what type is it again? It's a TIP-31C. Okay, there are several equivalent transistors to the circuit and I believe at this point I have the design optimized enough that the only thing left to do would be to find a transistor that oscillates at a higher frequency um, but I don't think I'm pushing the limits of this guy yet um, because I can drive it all the way up to 15 uh, and this this massive heatsink keeps it I mean it's, it's warm to the touch the specifications dictate that it can sustain temperatures up to I believe 150 degrees Celsius not that I'm trying to get that hot to begin with but at 15 volts it's it's fairly reasonable the light does pretty good um, but yeah I just wanted this to be an introductory video so you can see uh, what I've got working with so far um, I'm definitely gonna come out with more videos and tutorials uh, I actually have a lot of spare components. I might actually be selling these as kits if anybody is, is interested. Um, this is a 1000 turn 32 AWG coil. And this is my attempt at a Tord. Uh, there's coils going this way. And then, of course, you can see this winding this way. And there is a small node 
that I soldered them together. You can see that. Actually, let me zoom in a little bit. Let me zoom in on this guy a little bit. So then actually you can get a shot of the plasma as well. There is a little bit of plasma at the tip. It's kind of difficult to see because it's bright. But there is most certainly plasma coming off that guy. It burns a little bit. It doesn't electrocute you. Um, I wouldn't say I would hold my hand there for a few seconds or anything like that. But it definitely does give you a little jolt. I'm also going to be going over some other tests with this thing. Uh, supposedly these guys generate RF. Um, supposedly they generate RF. And I do have a way to test that. But some of you may laugh at my method, but it's the only thing I have to use. Um, I'll also bring that to you in a later view. I will try to see if this thing is generating RF. There's a lot of talk on YouTube whether or not they do. Um, I believe that they do. Uh, supposedly that, tri that chip is uh, resonating at 1 gigahertz. Uh, so we will see what kind of signals I can pick up. I do have something that can measure things in that range, uh, supposedly. But, yeah... Here's my Tesla coil. I have this potentiometer on the circuit, and, and it is kind of, um, it's a little finicky, but I figure once I get everything soldered down, it'll be less finicky. Alright, I just wanted to get a better shot of the plasma. You know, let me take this guy off the truck. So the next step in the process would be to add a ferrite core right down the center of the PVC. Yep. And then hopefully I'll be able to extend the range further. <clears throat> now another thing, uh, even though the torrid is not necessary, so if I zoom back out, zoom out a little bit, I can still light the bulb, but as you can see, the range is decreased by the fact that I don't have the torrid on at the moment. See, look how close I have to get to the light for it to shine. I mean, you can drag it. You can drag it. Actually, once it once it catches, you can actually pull it out a little bit more before it loses it which is kind of neat. Uh, I'll be doing a lot of other cool things with this. I'm um, going to hopefully generate up, uh, have build some kind of dish for it so I can focus the energy and maybe power like small vehicles, maybe a, a long distance wireless charger uh, just for the hell of it. See what other kind of crazy things I can do with this thing. Uh, and again, the beautiful thing about this thing, it's extremely low voltage. So anybody can build one of these things. They're, they're fairly safe. Uh, I'm going to get more into the safety in a different video, but let me wrap this up considering this is the first video. I had to keep it under 15 minutes, otherwise I don't think YouTube would let me up upload it. So this will be the first in a series of many videos about the Tesla coil. Uh, go ahead and hit like and subscribe. I will most certainly be keeping up with this project. Uh, I plan to get more videos done today, but I had to do some work on my car today. So I didn't get enough channel time to to um create these videos. Again, let me get a shot of the breadboard. There it is, upside down, so you guys can read it better. Plus or minus fifteen volts, plus five volts, and then ah, burn me, you heard that. Caught my skin. Uh and then on the other side it says five hundred milliamps. Right below it. And then one amp on the plus five volt. So that's all that is. And two diodes. This potentiometer actually. I may as well demonstrate that right now. I can pull out this potentiometer and the circuit will still fire. So technically it's only three components. A resistor, uh, not even the resistor, are two diodes and the transistor. That's all she wrote. Alright, don't forget to hit like and subscribe and I'll get back to you.